<sighs> Good afternoon. So Roy and I were talking earlier while we were having lunch, talking about how he gets frustrated that he encourages those around him, challenges, a more appropriate word, around him to, to be more, to do more, to follow their dreams, to follow their passions, to be more successful in whatever way it is uh, to them. But he also has some ideas of what they can try or what they can do. And he gets frustrated when those suggestions are not followed through with. When it comes to me, he gets especially frustrated because so many things that I've started, that I haven't completed, that I haven't followed through with, that I haven't blah, 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 whatever excuses or reasons I can come up with. And for instance, one of those things is this podcast. And I've started going back and doing this podcast again because as much as I enjoyed doing it, for some reason, I just stopped. It's been almost, I think maybe two years since I got back, since I've done a podcast that I'm back doing this. And why did I stop? What was the reason behind? And I can make all kinds of reasons. I can say, you know, we've been working a lot. We've been going out of town a lot with work, you know, our sign business. We've been working on the houses, renovating the houses that we've got for rent and updating them and doing all this kind of stuff. So I haven't had time to do the podcast, to do the editing, to do all these things that I should be doing for the podcast and you know, YouTube channel to be able to do the things that I want to do. I was talking to him today and I re actually realized it last night. Not that I realized it, I think I actually admitted that part of the reason is I'm afraid of success. That's the cold hard truth. That's me looking at that shadow and going, yep, as ridiculous as my conscious mind thinks it is, subconsciously, I've been doing all of these things to sabotage myself. I've all these reasons why I can't or why I won't or why, you know, it's not possible or whatever other bullshit ideas I can come up with. I started thinking, what is it that is the basis of those thoughts? What is it the basis of those beliefs? So last night I did a hypnosis and I was doing some meditating and as much work as I've done on my past and on rectifying or working through a lot of the old beliefs and ideas that I've had, there's still a lot of blockages that are there. And one of those being based on success, on the, the idea of me being successful and my world not falling apart because of that success. So my idea is that, or my belief was that because in my family when I was growing up, my dad was a breadwinner, my mom was a stay-at-home mom. Even though she's incredibly intelligent, she's incredibly dynamic. And as much as I love you, mom, I don't want to be her, be in her situation. I'm doing everything, like Roy said, I'm doing everything to head that plane in that direction straight for the ground and my belief was that the guys in the family are the providers they're the breadwinners and if you make too much money they're gonna leave and that's a ridiculous belief because first Roy has told me countless times i can't even name how many times he's told me he would love for me to make the money so that he could be stay at home do what he wants to do in my heart i want to do that but i want to do something that i love i want to do something that i enjoy i want to be doing something that yes brings in the the money but that is at the core something that i enjoy doing so this idea that if i make money and, and i make good money that he's going to leave is absolutely asinine. A conscious mind knows this, 
And that's the thing. Anytime you hear yourself I say, I know, realize that even though logically you may know whatever it is that you need to be doing, that you should understand, that you should be able to change this belief, I know that I should be able to change this belief, that doesn't necessarily mean that you truly understand that, whatever it is. And understanding it to the core. So I know, logically, I know that these things are stupid, that these ideas are just ridiculous, that uh, I'm, I'm making excuses or whatever it is, or I'm allowing those blockages and those beliefs. Allowing is the key word. I'm allowing those blockages and beliefs to get in my way when all I need to do is make a conscious effort to do something differently. To go out that door, as Roy says, instead of taking a right, take a left. And it's as simple as that. And even though it's as simple as that, being able to work through the things that are holding you back is even more important. Oh, I'm having a hot flash. Woo, baby. Menopause, it's an amazing thing. Burning off those old feelings, burning off all those old beliefs. Hell yeah, okay, so that's what's happening. So me talking to you about it is uh, creating change internally. Um, but I, I want to, ooh, give me just a second. I want to be able to subconsciously do something different. So what do I need to do to do things differently? I need to find other methods of changing beliefs. So doing EFT, I love doing EFT. It's such an amazing technique, it really is. Uh, and doing some self-hypnosis. These are all things that I've done in the past, but I didn't continue. So it's, it's like when you take a medicine, you're supposed to take it for 10 days, but you know, after five days, you feel great. So you're like, oh, I don't have to take the rest of this because you know, I'm feeling great. I don't need to finish the, the, the medication. And then you stop taking it and then you get doubly worse. You're even worse off than you were before you started. And then you gotta start the whole regime all over again. This is the same thing. So everybody says it's a meditation practice for a reason. You're practicing, you're improving slowly and you may have some exponential growth at, at certain times, but you've gotta to continue to do it because what do they say? New level, new devil. There's always something that you need to, to update, something that you need to um, improve on. There's this wonderful idea that, and, and I love it. I love growing. I love improving myself and I love changing. I love progressing. I do not like being stagnant. And there are so many times that as ironic as it is, a lot of times, and for the longest time, I have been stagnant. It's like I have these spurts of, I'm gonna get this shit done and I get a lot done and then I go to nothing. And I think I need to learn how to better regulate my energy. That's another thing I'm learning about human design, which is absolutely fascinating. I absolutely am, am so engrossed. <laughs> so I'm a projector, uh, an orchestrator, depending on you know, how you think of it. It's the same thing, but just a different, you know, newer terminology. And it's, interesting to find out things about yourself and improve and, and uh, discover how you best work what is it that's innate in you and how you do things so i learned about my sacred gifts thank you marjane one of my sacred gifts go figure is encouragement i love that i love that i've things that i knew it's like a confirmation. Like, I know these things about myself, but having it verified makes all the difference. So anyway, going back to the fear of success, the idea that because I'm concerned about Roy leaving 
if I make a lot of money, if I'm a successful person and he's just to do whatever the hell he wants. It really does scare me. And working through that fear, actually speaking it out helps a great deal. It really does. I know as amazing or ridiculous as that sounds, just speaking it out and being aware of that is a little bit more empowering, is a little bit more of, okay, I'm aware of what the issue is. I'm sure that there's some other stuff behind it, but it's a beginning. It's a place to start. It's a place for me to sit down and actually have something to journal about and be like, okay, so this is the issue. What is it that I need to be doing differently to be able to reframe that belief? To think about it in a different way that is more empowering. So I used to believe that the men in the family were the ones who are the providers. They're the ones who made the money. They're the ones who took care of everything. And as women, we're the nurturers, the, the homebodies, we're the do everything behind the scenes kind of person. I don't believe that's true anymore. Now, understand, I'm saying this out loud. I'm not fully convinced of it yet, but speaking it out loud enables me to change my story. It is enabling me to rethink these old beliefs and realize that even though my consciousness knows, my logic knows that, and I'm always going on about logic, knows that this is not actually how I feel. I f believe the more I say it out loud, the more that I in internalize that belief, the more I do things like this, like share with you and be able to and start doing more podcasts and actually doing the things that I want to be doing, then that belief will change. That belief will shift into actually embedding itself into me. But I have to do it. I have to do these things. I have to change the way that I see things and the way that I interpret the world around me in that as much as Roy is the breadwinner in the household, it doesn't have to be that way. It's so funny because another thing we were talking about at lunch today was the sign business, which neither one of us wants to do so much anymore, is actually pulling away from us. And customers are kind of like dropping off and not getting back to us. And as much as we You'd probably be freaking out, like, oh my God, we're not going to be able to do what we need to do. I always trust. That's one other one of my sacred gifts is, is just a knowing, a knowing that things will work out. A trust, I have an incredible trust in the universe and the way that things are going to work out. I know and can see what our future is going to look like. And it's unbelievable. And what's funny is that I know what I can see and what the universe knows and is bringing about, what the universe is bringing about is even more amazing and rich and spectacular and fantastic than I can ever imagine. So if I imagine big, the universe is like imagining way bigger. And that's spectacular. So that fear of success kind of draws back and feels like it's diminishing a little bit. And still, I need to make sure that I persevere and that I stay on top of it and I don't allow it to, to come back in full force and to, to take over my world. Little steps. Little steps is better than no steps. I've been taking no steps. Not going backwards because I'm continually learning and growing and doing different things. It's just that I've not been working towards the things that I really love. This podcast and my YouTube channel and sharing things with you that I want to share. Now, whether you want to listen to it or not, or you want to take it in, or you want to believe in it, or you want to do anything with it, 
that's on you and that's perfectly fine. And I don't let that bother me. I really don't. I mean, Roy thinks it's so funny that I just, excuse my language, don't give a fuck what other people think. I don't. I've actually gotten to a point in my life when I can honestly say that I really don't care what other people think. If they want to think whatever they want about me, it doesn't bother me. What bothers me is the idea that I've been holding myself back for the fear of actually succeeding at something and not sharing a message with the world that could actually benefit somebody. Even if it's a simple word or a simple phrase or something that I say that maybe has an impact on somebody that in one of my podcasts, maybe I say something that changes your life, that helps you to realize the amazing potential that you have. Because if, if I have amazing potential, everybody else out there has amazing potential. We are all unique. We are all amazing, spectacular, creative beings. We just have to, to have to remember to be and not to just be doing, enjoying our lives. I know everybody's like, oh, I'm, not, I'm a human being, not a human doing. Well, I don't know. I got to do. Because if I can't do, then what am I being for? <laughs> Maybe, I don't change my mind next week or tomorrow or 10 minutes from now. Who the hell knows? But right now, I'm just rambling. And that's fine. I just wanted to share the insight that I got about myself and that fear of success. It's something that I'm going to work on doing this and creating this podcast or rebuilding this podcast. That was another thing. So thinking about this podcast, I realized and this is something that we, I'm sure I'm not the only one, is we go back and we're like, if only. So if only I had continued my podcast when I was doing my podcast and doing the YouTube channel, I would have been doing what I foresee this whole time. I know I would have a, a following. I would be able to monetize my podcast and monetize my YouTube channel, if only. But I can't live in the if only. I don't have any regrets because there was a lot of growing I needed to do to be able to get to the point where I can start this back up again and be able to share with you what I want to share. So if only I had kept doing that, yes, I could have been showing you my growth, sharing with you my growth. So doing these things that I could have been doing, but I'm not going to beat myself up over it. There's no point. There really is no point. Other than hurting myself, it's, there's no point in me doing it. So why do it? I know that there may be something in your life that you're like, well, if only I had done this, if only I had done this differently, or I had talked to this person differently, or if I continued doing whatever, or if I'd let go of this, or if I had changed something, if only, if only, if only. But that if only is not gonna get you anywhere. So how about what if? What if I keep going? What if I keep sharing? What if I am able to grow this to a massive following, to having it be monetized, to having the ability to be able to share my message, to share what Roy and I are doing, to share all the places that we go to, all the things that we're working on, all the projects that we've got going, to be able to share with you the insights that I have. The, I would like to think it's wisdom. It depends on who you are and what you think, but yeah, I'd like to think it is. Insights. So what if? What if I don't stop? What if I keep going? What if when I get to a point where I really am like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. 
I sit down and I look at it and decide if I really want to do that or if I'm self-sabotaging. What if I approach this fear of success in a different way? And what if, instead of allowing it to take over my life, I push through it? And what if, what if? completely changes the idea of what I've got going on. Completely changes my perception. What if you decided you want to live life differently? What if you wanted to live with no regrets? What if you took everything that you took as a trauma or a, a negative or something hurtful or painful or a belief that's holding you back or a thought or idea that's not serving you anymore. What if you decided you were going to do something differently? What if you decided you're going to change how you do things moving forward? What would you do? What would you change? What's one thing? Let's start with this. So I've shared with you one thing that I'm going to be doing, and that's my podcast and my YouTube hands fall asleep. So my objective is to do three podcasts a week to start out. So I was doing one daily, and I think maybe that's what kind of I got a little overwhelmed. So I'm going to be doing three podcasts. Now, they may be on different things. So just... Bear with me. Um, But share with me one thing. All it has to be, just one thing that you're you're going to do differently. What, excuse me, belief are you going to change? What thought are you going to change? What way of doing things are you going to change? Maybe you're going to, you know, do something as simple as Say no to the people in your life who are taking, 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 and all you're doing is giving and draining your energy. I have a very good friend, and actually I'm going to have him on my podcast, who's going through this exact exact thing. He's decided that the one thing he's going to be doing is saying no to the people who only take. And I commend him for that because that takes a lot of guts. When you're willing to change and you're willing to grow, but the people around you are kind of pulling you down because they're afraid of what they see in you that's growing and changing because they realize that they're not growing and changing. It's hard. It really is. Uh, My circle, my circle of friends, my circle of intimate people is minuscule. Roy, pretty much. And even Roy doesn't know everything about me. Bird squirrel but share with me let me know what's that one thing that that you're going to do differently to be different to adjust in your life to say no to to say yes to Uh, what is it that you're going to do to improve your world let me know share Share it with me. Share it down in the comments. It's good to be back. It really is. I really enjoy doing this. I know it's crazy. It's okay. Most people are like, how can you talk to yourself? I know you're... I have a friend who started a, doing TikToks, and she's like, I don't know how you do this talking to yourself. I'm like, I just... I just go into the zone and start rambling. So, yeah. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I hope this helped in some way, maybe. And if not, all right, it was fun listening, fun talking to you, and have a good night, have a good day, wherever you are. I'm happy to be back doing this, and I will uh, talk to you guys later. Soulfire reignited is reignited. (laughs) Bye, guys. Later.